Uh, on the wireless bus. Okay, so last yes. last class we discussed approval process and we'll continue with mm -hmm. the same approval process with some scenarios, mm -hmm. real time scenario. <coughs> so let me log in into Oracle. Srini.imp is my user. So we discuss we discuss that we have three type of participant, right? Like we have serial participant, single participant, and parallel participant, right? And based on that, we'll build one scenario. Like for example, in our organization, the approval, journal approval is based on the journal line amount. <coughs> The journal approval based on journal line. Okay. <clears throat> so if if the journal line amount is uh, below one zero one, it will be auto approved. If the journal line amount Okay, it's one zero one to one thousand. <coughs> it will go for one level of approval. If the journal line it's one thousand one or more than one thousand one. It will go for two level of approval. Okay, so this is my business scenario. How can I going? Uh, how I am going to accept this with the BPM approval? Is anybody, anybody again join? Okay. <coughs> Okay, so this is my business scenario. And now, one level of approval means I am the creator of the journal, right? Srini IMP is the user. The creator of the journal. Okay, <clears throat> now, if the journal approval based on journal line and it is the amount is uh, below 101, it will be auto approved. That means it will not go for any level of approval. That means it will not go to my supervisor. Srini IMP is the journal creator and uh, the manager of Srini IMP, it will not go. The journal will stop there and it will be auto approved. The system will check the line amount and it will be auto approved. Now, if uh, <clears throat> it is more than, in this case, what will happen? It will go to the manager of the Srini IMP. Immediate manager, right? Because one level of approval. <clears throat> Okay, if it is more than 1000, it will go to level of approval. Man, manager of the manager of Srini. Okay, so this is our business scenario. <coughs> so let me go to system uh, navigate to general approval. Setup and maintenance. Okay. Manage journal approval. Manage journal approval rule. 
<laughs> Again, same navigation. You can go to tax configuration. Okay, under tax configuration, select finance GL. <laughs> finance GL under which we have the predefined participant and stage has been defined. So click on finance GL journal approval. Once you click on that, you will get the assigned dashboard. Assignees, right? If you click on assignees, you have to navigate to the edit mode, right? You have to come to the edit mode so that you can uh, edit that rule as per our business scenario, right? Start synchronization. So this will, uh, you have to run that to sync the approval process. <coughs> okay, let me just uh, run that program in the background. And again, I'll navigate to general approval. Go to assignee. <laughs> As I discussed earlier, we have a lot of participants available here, but it's not mandatory that you will use all the participants, right? So you can disable and enable the participant type, and number of participants you can create or disable or delete based on your requirement. So for the time being, what I do, this is the first participant, it's a serial type of participant. <coughs> serial type participant means one by one the approval will go. And it is best uh, suitable for supervised kind of approval. <coughs> approval list builder. That means whenever you create a journal. So the journal will go to the approval for your manager, your supervisor. <coughs> so that is the ideal list builder for journal approval. So here supervisory journal approval rule, right? So here let me check. What is this uh, participant type? It's the serial, right? So let me make it under serial. I'll make the convert it to single participant. <coughs> so if you make it to convert it to parallel, again, the symbol will change to parallel. So what I'll do, I'll convert it to single and then go to my rule. So how we can navigate to the rule? Just select the participant and Click here the basic option, right? Under that, you will get the basic option for that particular participant. How it is enabled? If you go to advanced, ignore participant. This is very important. Whenever you want to bypass any participant, you have to uncheck this ignore participant <coughs> or check this ignore participant, right? So if you want to enable any participant, you have to disable this so that this participant will be enabled. Uh, for a approval workflow. So except this one, all my participant has been disabled. That means ignore participant is enabled. If you go to advanced, <coughs> ignore participant is enabled so that the approval workflow will not consider all this participant. Only this will be active and it will be used for my uh, rule. So click on journal supervisory journal approval rule set. If you click on this, lot of approval rules because it's a vision instance, you will see a lot of for different approval rule uh, created already, but you have to create your own approval rule for your ledger, right? So what you can do, <coughs> either you can copy the existing rule or you can create your own rule and modify or you can copy the existing rule you can modify. So in the last I created two, three approval rules. I'll explain how I created this. OK, the first rule is. <coughs> there is a background noise, sir. Uh, is it uh, Prasad or somebody? I don't know. Ah, right, right. I'm also getting that. Yeah, please mute yourself. <coughs> 
Okay. So this is the first scenario. Like what is what is the first scenario? If the journal line amount is below 101, it will be auto approved. So this is my first scenario. So Tata primary ledger less than 101. I created this rule. How you can create? If you click on this generate rule, if you click on generate rule, <coughs> it will give you a rule to create. Generate rule. OK. So it will give you the like the blank then and if condition, if and then condition. So you can create your line here and <coughs> save it and commit it for your approval. Other th thing like yeah, you can review the existing rule, right? If, if this rule is ideal for you, any existing rule. Uh, in your organization, it's some rule already been created, right? You want to create a new rule based on the existing rule. What you can do? You can just uh, select that rule and copy. OK, if you copy it. And paste it. Again, go to that uh, icon and paste. So here it will again create a new rule, so you can change that. <coughs> Rule name and create if you go to property. OK, you can change the rule uh, name and description. And then modify your rule. So it is very important whenever you create a rule, click on the active button so that rule will be. Initiated <coughs> otherwise, if you create rule and it, the active button is disabled, you cannot use that rule. OK, in that way you can either leverage the existing rule or from scratch, you have to create your own rule like this. So for this Tata less than approval rule, let us try to understand what is the condition here. <coughs> the first condition is. How you can enable the condition, right? So journal batch ledger, journal batch ledger enabled journal approval indicators. OK. What is that means? If you go to any journal. OK. <coughs> General accounting journal, right? When you create a journal, right? So this approval status, it is required, right? <coughs> so this rule indicates that first condition that it should be the status always should be required. Then only one of the condition will be fulfilled. <coughs> if the journal specify ledger level, our approval status is disabled, then this rule will not work. So my first condition is. Journal batch, how you can select? Journal batch, so here you will see a lot of uh, attribute buckets. Under each buckets, whatever you need, you can search and. Select that OK, for example, this one is a journal batch ledger, right? Journal batch ledger enabled journal approval indicators. <coughs> so you can search for that uh, attributes, journal batch ledger attributes. <laughs> <coughs> journal batch ledger, right? So here under that you can select. Whatever your uh, condition, right? Approval indicators. Ledger enabled to journal approval indicator. Just select that. OK, I already have selected. So that indicator should be yes. So you have to click on yes here, right? Once you click the first condition, what do you can do? Uh, the second condition. Second condition, either you have to. Select a. Connector, right? Simple test, <clears throat> if you click on simple test. Then uh, it will give you a and or, or connector. OK, so in this case, my journal batch indicator should be yes and. I am giving a and condition here because. 
I have to fulfill some other conditions along with the first condition. Okay, that's why I give in the and condition here. So journal batch ledger name again. So you have to select for which ledger you are creating this approval ledger. So my ledger name is startup primary ledger, right? So you have to write this. So this is not a dynamic. Sorry, it is not a you. You don't need to select this <coughs> for any value. So you have to type this with some. Uh, your complete exact uh, ledger name you have to. Enter here. <coughs> so my journal batch ledger name. Again, you can select some journal batch ledger folder and ledger name. OK. So journal batch ledger and under that you have to select the what is the, what is my ledger name, right? Ledger name. Like that. So my ledger name is Tata primary ledger. So what is the most important condition like so my third condition is and OK. That means Ellen with the first two condition, my third condition should be also achieved. So my third condition is maximum journal line amount. Is less than 101. OK. So this is my last condition. So here also similar maximum amount journal line. <coughs> maximum amount journal line you can select here. <laughs> OK, maximum amount journal line. OK, so you can select this. And here you will see lot of uh, option here, whether it is equal to 101 or uh, more than 101, same or more than 101, less than in between or in. So in my situation or in my scenario, it should be below 101 so that it will go for auto approval. So my list builder is supervisory. How we can uh, uh, create a list builder? <coughs> so here. Ignore all these things. Just you can go to the last. Add approval, right? This is the last option, right? Add approval. If you select here. You have get. Uh, you will see here. Approval group, job level, management chain, position, resource, supervisory. <coughs> so this all these uh, six options or six list builder work based on certain scenarios. If it is based on approval group, we checked uh, yesterday, right? Like if you can create approval group and include approval group and include uh, your uh, suitable approvers like who, who are uh, going to approve the journal. That is one option. Second option is job level. So. If uh, only the finance manager, OK, or uh, general manager finance or CFO finance, it's a kind of job, right? Uh, or management chain. So it's certain management chain you are going to create in your organization. You have to select based on that uh, approval will work. <coughs> position means position hierarchy. In your HCM, human supply chain management, uh, human capital management. Uh, usually the your uh, HR position hierarchy will be created and based on that structure, you can leverage that position structure or position hierarchy and uh, build your approval rules. Resource means particular resource, specific resource like CFO. Or a CEO, chairman, manager, assistant manager. OK, particular resource. It's not based on any supervisory chain or uh, position and job hierarchy. So once you trigger the approval, it will directly go to that particular resource. In that way, you can supervisory. It's a chain. OK. First, I will create the journal. It will go to my approval. Then it will next approval. So it's a kind of level of approval workflow. OK, so I am here for my scenario. I am selecting supervisory as the list builder. 
so response type is required level of <coughs> number of level is one number of level is uh, one means uh, person who is creating the approval creating the journal immediate approval immediate uh, manager of that uh, journal creator it will be it will go to that uh, manager right okay that means <coughs> journal creators manager that is one level of manager sorry one level of uh, approval so starting participant starting participant you have to enable system or let the system know that uh, who is the journal creator okay because in every workflow there should be a starting start point and there is an end point right so from where the workflow will start we have to let the system know right so if you go here list builder is supervisory reference user reference user means journal submitter srini imp srini imp is the journal submitter that that's why this is the starting user or starting participant of this workflow so once you see the imp will create the journal the uh, approval workflow will trigger this is the starting participant okay so for the starting participant what is our action get manager that means for this reference manager the workflow will search for the who is the manager of that starting participant so you have to select the get manager get manager for whom the starting participant or the journal submitter in this way you have to build here hierarchy type by default it will show no need to change anything just click and okay <coughs> what is the top participant top participant means who is the topmost person in the hierarchy like your ceo or uh, chairman or uh, chief chief operating officer right chief executive officer ceo so you have to provide the name of that person who is the ceo so in my current organization this guy is the topmost person topmost authority so the approval workflow will not go beyond this person that means okay so this is the in the approval hierarchy is the topmost person or the top participant that's why i am here selecting the get user not get manager because he is the topmost person he does not have any manager he is the chairman of the organization okay so for the top participant you don't need to get manager but a starting participant we have to get manager right who is the you have to identify who is the immediate manager okay so now uh, auto action is enabled why because as per my business scenario my amount is less than 101 auto action will be approved so this is the rule name like my approval workflow rule name so in this way you can build your rule and validate so this is my first rule sorry what happened okay so i created one this rule i have to delete this because once you create the rule you have to provide all the details here otherwise it will not work so i'll delete that so any other uh, rules i created i'll delete that you cannot create a rule and complete without complete it will it will that validation will fail okay so now uh, my rule is validated the first rule that means auto approval rule so once you validate your rule the next next process is to save it and then commit this is mandatory 
<coughs> save and commit. Without commit, uh, the rule will not be effective. So what I do, I'll create one journal. My ledger is data. So when you gave a supervisor as the first approver, um, mm -hmm. did you mention the name or is it going to pick up from the head? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Team? Let me show you that one. Yeah, yeah, you remember me. So what, uh, so Srini IMP and the submitter, okay? So how I can do that? Setup and maintenance. <coughs> Manage user. So this is Srini IMP. Okay, this is my login, and the employee name is Srini Mohan. So for this user, manager is test IMP four. Okay, so you have to mention the manager name here. Yeah. So it's important that you have to create a user, and the user name should be employee user. How we can create the user? If you click on uh, manage user, you can click plus button. So any user you can create here as an employee user or employee. Basically, whenever you are uh, the or your organization is hiring an employee, you can create a This is part of the HCM. Uh, um, HCM, right, right. Yeah, HCM okay. model. But you should know actually uh, how we can create employee user. But when you join one organization, uh, the HCM people, they will take your data and they will create your user here. So in this case, the user must have already been created, right? <clears throat> yeah, 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 right, right. Okay. Yeah. But you can, for testing purpose, you can create an employee user and you can uh, test anything. But that is mandatory because without employee user, certain uh, business activities we cannot do. So once you create a user, employee person type, whether you, say you are a contractor or an employee contingent worker. So, for example, this demo user is an employee of the organization. So for which legal entity? <coughs> US legal entity, for example. And Sorry, uh, Shini, so create employee and create user are two different uh, activities or yeah, are yeah. they the same? Yeah, correct. So create user. <coughs> whatever user I created in my past class, that is called an implementation user. And that is implementation user I created. And uh, implementation user, usually they are not the employee of the organization. Okay. Because I am doing the, I am implementing partner. Okay. Implementation partner of the organization. And uh, that's why I got the admin right and setup and maintenance right to complete my setups and other activities. Employee user means employee or organization, right? Employee of your uh, organization. And what you can do once you create an employee user, employee also, they should have login detail, right? How you can get that? You have to link that employee user to a implementation user. So in 